everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. Uh, we are rejoining the c crew of the Cosmos 228 slash uh, Venera Horizons mission, uh, still in orbit, uh, about six minutes from their deorbit burn. They, they've been here for uh, a few days, almost a week. Uh, we have one more launch in our Venus window, uh, still waiting to go up. Uh, we just need a pad refurbished enough to do it. Um, so we're actually going to start our deorbit procedures for this crew here. I already have the node set up. It's about five minutes away. I should uh, probably activate our OMS engine. Make sure our hinge is nice and stowed. We just want to avoid as much of that as possible. There we go. Uh, OMS engine is activate. You can go away. Let's go ahead and get ourselves pivoted into this node. Uh, since we can do 127 meters per second in two minutes, we need to do 68, so, you know, that's like, what, 45 seconds. We have this whole tank full for absolutely no reason whatsoever. We probably could have left all of that at home, honestly. But, um, I don't know. I, I like standardized configurations. They're a lot easier to fly. And uh, you don't have to make so many adjustments. Um, yeah, I guess uh, Jaeger's not cool enough to aim into the node. That seems odd. All right, let's, uh, yeah. So we got a couple of minutes to kill. Not a big deal. We'll just um, go ahead and ride this down. I'm gonna do one last check of our node placement. Yeah, we'll, uh, Periapsis is almost directly over Cape Canaveral. You see our orbital track takes us just a little south. Uh, I think we can divert about that much. Although uh, I really think we could probably push this node back. I think last time we had it right over Cape Canaveral, we ended up in Louisiana. Or maybe it was Texas, but we're going to try real hard not to do that this time. All right. So, up oh, 47 seconds. Let's just go ahead and ullage in this engine. And ignition. Uh, a solid light on our uh, AJ-10-118K. Let's just uh, try to focus here and on the node, and I'm just going to do this periapsis adjustment manually. We're going to shoot for about a 50 kilometer uh, peri G uh, for our descent. That uh, seemed to work out pretty well last time, although I missed the runway by a uh, really, really wide margin. Although, uh, no, I guess we're coming down from about the same height. 288, we came down from what uh, Kawaii Protato Station last time. Was that last time? I feel like it should have been. Like, I'm pretty sure I've... Yeah, that was the, the K variant. Took a crew up. Okay. Just confusing my shuttle flights, that's all. <laughs> there have been uh, quite a few, although not exactly of this variant, and there will undoubtedly be many, many more. Yeah, so I will find any excuse to extend the shuttle program because it is particularly profitable. Not this flight specifically, but uh, flights that carry three Kerbals make us a lot of money, and uh, they're relatively easy to do, especially when we've got such a fine platform to work from. Alright, uh, Periaps is down to 80-something kilometers. Node is wandering. Of course the node is wandering. What, why wouldn't it wander? I have no idea. Maybe that correction would have been beneficial and shut down. 49 kilometers. Uh, not too terrible, but we'll go ahead and get ourselves uh, angled for descent. Our electric charge is fine. Our fuel cells should have been running this thing um, pretty cleanly. All on their own. We'll go ahead and make sure all of those are unlocked. I didn't know there was a center core to that also. So, um, no, nope, that would be the RTG. Activate fuel cell. Good enough. Let's kill that node. Hello, moon. This is a, quite a nimble little spacecraft. Alright, and... Nope, way too much. Yeah, I forgot. It's real good at pitching up, pitching down. You know, meh. So let me lock that open and, uh, out, out. Pump some fuel forward. We're going to be, uh, this is the amount of fuel we're going to carry down with this. All of this is pretty much going to get vented now that we are on a suborbital track. 
Is there any life support anywhere else on this thing, I wonder? What's our total endurance today? Well, 15 days, roughly. Alright, so we can bring this up and go ahead and vent things. The pants don't... Nitrogen tetroxide, dump. Very good. Close that off, make sure we don't accidentally vent anything else. And then open this up, uh, we'll just do in, in. All of it, there we go. Actually, leave both of these open during descent so that I can uh, manage our balance. Whoa. Where are you going there, buddy? All right. So we will uh, speed ourselves around to our uh, thunk of Atmo, or uh, just a little bit beforehand where we were store our solar panels and uh, Action Group close up the cargo bay. We'll also bring out Atmospheric Autopilot and uh, get it primed and ready to go here. Um, as soon as we get that nice little clunk of Atmo, we will be deactivating our SAS so that the two systems don't uh, fight with each other. Uh, quick view, or quick jump out to the map view to see uh, how well we are coming down. It's uh, pretty on point. Um, I'm going to try to increase the cross range of uh, our... I don't know, our glide slope here by keeping a little bit more uh, nose down than normal. We'll try to keep it around uh, 25 to 30 degrees for the bulk of our reentry in hopes that we can stretch our glide slope uh, all the way to Florida, which uh, I have yet to put this uh, Mark 6 down on a runway. I really, uh, anything except the SKS, I don't think I've put down on a runway unless there was a uh, launch abort involved. Uh, a little bit of wiggles in uh, four times time acceleration. Uh, nothing new, really. Um, atmospheric Autopilot doing a pretty good job of keeping us pointed dead on. We've got a, uh, a nice orbital track that should take us uh, right over Cape Canaveral Air Force Base, so we should have uh, a pretty easy time getting this to where we need it to be. We don't have to deflect like we did uh, a bunch last time, which was probably what bit our cross range. Uh, overheat warnings on the thrusters, those are normal. I actually uh, also expect uh, any uh, struts that are placed in the bay in the bay to overheat and explode as they uh, often do uh, they are somehow internally ablative uh, for reasons I don't quite understand but um, thermal dynamics are not my specialty uh, at all most of this I just don't understand anyway so uh, crossing now over the uh, Gulf of California and on into Mexico um, Everything's still looking relatively normal. Haven't even uh, started to build up some flame effects. There they are. And uh, a few overheat warnings uh, gave me a little bit of a pause to give us a little more pitch up. But nothing really uh, hitting critical overheat, which uh, seemed all fine and dandy. So I kicked the overheat or kicked the uh, time warp uh, back on up to four times uh, time acceleration, where uh, I did notice some additional warnings. And so, well, I'll turn you back over here to uh, old me, who's going to be very alarmed. Okay, we've had a failure. Um, our interconnector here connecting our engines to the rest of the spacecraft has burned up and exploded quite inexplicably. Um, I'm very scared to change our heading because it looks like our engine and pants are going to detach themselves. Oh god. What the hell just happened? How and why? I swear that same part is on... Uh... The Mark 6K, and we did not have that problem on a very, very similar re-entry profile. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Uh, so we're just gonna hold very, very still and uh, see where we end up. We're already down to about four kilometers per second at uh, 60 kilometers altitude and descending. I don't want to move anything or go into physics warp. Oh boy. Jaeger, Nina. <laughs> Uh, at least we got some thruster fuel up here, because we don't have access to that tank anymore. That is now a separate craft that has our parachute and our speed brakes on it. Uh, we still have three good landing gear. And uh, one of the best pilots in the program. So... Oh boy. Um... Oh boy. Just, uh, don't touch anything, Yegor. Not until we know that you're... Yeah, I'll say right now it looks like one or two skips might get you to Florida. Under normal circumstances where we had better balance, that might actually be a thing at this speed. Uh, I may have come in way short anyway. Well, this is going to be real interesting to fly. Um, yeah, we're decelerating pretty quickly. I'm wondering if we should divert or just go for it. Uh, I don't want to use physics warp. But I'm really eager to get them closer to the ground at a much slower speed. Uh, I don't even pretend to know exactly what happened uh, here. It went straight from no overheat warning to uh, an overheat warning and explosion. I thought we were seeing ones from either uh, thruster ports or maybe struts that were inside the bay. Uh, it did not look like we were getting an overheat warning on that uh, structural angle part. Um, maybe I misidentified it as a probe core, but it uh, <laughs> it was quite a shock to me how rapidly it decided that uh, it was going to melt, whereas nothing else on the spacecraft seemed to melt. And this is a profile very similar that we took down with the, uh, the Mark 6K uh, much earlier. So I, I don't know if it was just my poor flying or if uh, KSP decided that it just really did not like me today. Um, but yeah, that's where we are uh, in a bit of a pickle. Okay, um, <laughs> I don't want to admit it, but I think our dreams of getting to Florida are shot. This uh, detached engine segment is creating a lot of extra drag. As you can see, it's making just a shelf there. So uh, I think we're going to aim over here and uh, just search for the closest available patch of dirt we can set down on. Um, Hopefully, with our engines still attached, although they have our drag parachutes, they won't deploy until it hits the ground. So, uh, unfortunately, if those come off, that whole section is just lost. Um, not that saving the money on the expensive bits is the important part, but it, uh, it would lessen the blow for sure. So... We're just going to aim this way-ish. We got 20 some odd kilometers to play with and a what would normally be an excellent glide slope. Although, man, the drag on that thing is incredible. Look at how fast we're slowing down. We're about to be subsonic. Oh, hear me, baby. Hold together. This may have been a mistake. trade in a lot of this altitude for speed. We're already down to 16 kilometers, and we are not very close to the shore. Not even in the slightest. I should have diverted to Louisiana. What was I thinking? Or to that island over there. I think all of it is just way out of range right now. Yeah, turning around might bleed too much, but we're about to be at our stall speed for this altitude. So, dive, dive, dive. Hope for the best. 
took me uh, all the way until now in post to realize that atmospheric autopilot is holding the air brakes on uh, to keep the back end in check. And uh, that probably cost us a lot more cross range than that uh, exposed section acting as its own aero brake. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to ditch. Very, very unfortunate. But uh, we're going to scoop in low and then just try to bleed as much speed as we can before we hit the water. Uh, we have a pretty fantastic stall speed, but we also have a big speed brake really screwing things up for us. It might be particularly heavy also. Uh, I don't know if getting the landing gear down or not is a good idea, but I think I'd rather let them take the brunt of the action. Okay, good. I, I didn't see that one because that little plume was in the way. Five kilometers altitude. 25 meters per second speed. Don't worry, we will flare and try to coast as best we can. We just need to get uh, a lot lower. We're not really picking up a whole lot of speed thanks to our disjointed engine section, which uh, hopefully the parachutes will deploy and pull that thing off right before we hit the water so that it doesn't slam back into us and explode. Although we got lots of cargo bay to soften the blow for the crew here. They are looking uh, none, none too pleased about this situation. Don't worry, Jaeger. You've been through worse, man. You can do this. Yeah, we're starting to even slow down at this angle. That's not a very good sign. Three kilometers. We might not need to flare at all, other than to put our butts down first instead of our face. Two kilometers, well, 2.8, but less than three kilometers. It keeps hitting the brakes. That atmospheric autopilot, we're just going to leave it on because this thing should be remarkably unstable. Yeah, I think uh, atmospheric autopilot keeps flaring the speed brakes to keep us on balance. One point five kilometer. Impossible to tell. Um, let's. Whoa! No! 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 Come on, get the nose down, Jaeger. You can do it. Oh God! Oh no! Why now? Goodbye, engine section. Oh God! Pull it up! Pull it up! Pull up! Jaeger, pull up! Forty meters. <laughs> they're alive. Oh, my God, they're alive. Aster switch disengage. Oh. Yeah, we saved some landing gear. I wonder if the engine section is okay. <laughs> uh, if it is, it's... No, it certainly wouldn't be more than two and a half kilometers away. Holy crap. Alright, well. Anything you can walk away from, right? hoo -ah. Well, uh, I really wonder what I did wrong here. Well, how much else did we lose? Yeah, basically the entire support section. Hey, we got a light. Excellent work, everyone. Uh, rescue crews are on their way. Uh, my heart rate is returning slowly to normal. Hua. -ah. Well, on that disappointing note, it's time to end. That's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and... Uh, I will see all of you in the next one, so until then, see you later.